Welcome to the Talk Over Podcast, a conversational platform for the DJs, by the DJs, brought to you by Double and Stylus. Swag. Tune in every week to hear us talk about all the things we see, hear and experience as DJs. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel by simply searching Talk Over Podcast on either Spotify or Apple Music. Yo, I'll tell you what I did the other day, I recorded a mix and I left a metronome on. Yeah. After I rendered it down, and it rendered down with the metronome in it. <laughs> and then I deleted what? the mix. Why did you? What do you mean the metronome? What did you use a metronome for the mix for? Ba- basically, I wanted to mi- I wanted to mix it down and boost some of the levels, so I threw it back into the software after I recorded it. I recorded it through Serato, Serato, then yeah, I threw it into Logic. Logic. Not sometimes the click just plays automatically when you open up a new template. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I never turned it off. <laughs> By accident, didn't think it, I didn't think anything of it. I just boosted the levels, and then rendered it off, threw the file away. Cause, cause oh. I'm used to doing it so much. Yeah. Fucking played it. The clicks there. Shit. So what you got to do? Redo the thing. Redo the whole mix, man. Fuck's sake. Was that the crep protect one? No, no, it was a different one. But I was just trying to do one to get to get my mix cloud moving again because I'm not putting nothing on there for about 19 years. I was like, let me just do one. Anyway, didn't go to plan, mate. So yeah, it's in the bin. Are you recording already? Yeah, yeah, I'm recording. So oh, there's see- a little. There's a little story for you guys. That is the perfect segue. That's the perfect segue. So, um, that's that would count as a mistake that you've made <laughs> that you would learn from. And that, that wasn't even on purpose. I love turn, that. Turn off the turn off the metronome, man. Uh, do you know what? Yeah, I literally didn't even think about it because I swear I've done. I didn't think it would render off with a metronome in the mix. You do exactly what I do, and it's the worst. It's one of the worst habits when you're creating content is throwing away master files and original files before testing the final. Like I, I do it so often because I'm OCD with it, and I like to keep my desktop clean and and everything yep. like that. So fill up the space, man. You want the space in it, like exactly. Like... So, but I'll do it, and also what I don't want to do is end up with like four versions of the same thing. So once it's done and into the next process, I throw the last process away. But, same, same. bro, I do it so often and then forget to check the newest version, throw the old version out, check the new version, and then there's something wrong with it. And it's like, oh, shit. Man was out here Googling how to, like, hack the trash can. <laughs> you know, after you've emptied the trash. <laughs> you do exactly what I do, innit? You put it in the trash can and then just empty the trash can. Straight away, bro. I'm I'm proper anal like that with, the, with keeping my computer clean. Like, I literally straight in the trash deletion realized what i'd done the next day when i'd gone to play it back ready to upload all i'm hearing is bro even i even downloaded the remix the other day that had the click in it but the click was in time so like i was thinking is that meant to be part of the record or is that producer completely fucked up the bass oh mate god one one of them Anyway, how, long, how long was that? Nice and double back double in back the in bitch, mate. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice intro. So mix is an hour long. long. Oh, and was there like, knowing you, there was some techers in there as well, like not just a basic mix. like Techers in there, bro, man. Like, Yeah, I'll never do it again. I'll never do it again. So yeah, I learned from my mistake. <laughs> oh, horrendous. Anyway, hashtag Killer, mate. talk over pod clart. Yes, We're here. Uh, do you know what I've just realised? I don't even use that. I don't even use hashtag talk over pod clot. I just realised. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even use it, bro. I used. I just put podcast in it by accident. Yeah. You started this bloody pod clot thing. And bro, it's the best thing it's because I fault. get I get messages from people like, "Ah, oh, the latest pod clot is amazing." Like it's really, <laughs> it's really a thing now. I love it, bro. Yeah, it I is love a it. Thing. It is a thing. Someone tried to jack our swag. Yeah. So just so you lot know, this is the original DJs podcast for the DJs, by the DJs, and that's all I'm saying. Someone someone called that thing the pod clot. Yeah. I don't know who it was. I don't know where they're seeing it. I think someone sent it on Instagram. No, someone sent it, yeah, someone sent it to me on WhatsApp. I sent you the screenshot. Okay, okay. that was it. There you they, go. They, that was the they one. have a pod clot. And then there's another one that's come up that's for the DJs, by the DJs. Nah, that's us. We are the original we are the original clots. That's us. But you know, whenever you create something incredible, there's always people that create sub versions of your incredibleness. So B tech versions. B tech versions. But thanks guys. Thanks for showing love. 
Uh, to the you? originators. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. we are t- we're, two year, we're two years deep, bro. We've been Happy out Happy birthday. Here. I know. It's mad. It's yeah. mad. We are, yeah, so. are going to do something special for the for the anniversary. We've not forgotten, by the way. Yeah. We're, um, doubles just being long right now, isn't it? Because it's got a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, basically. Everyone that listens knows. Like, Let's all blame. We'll just all blame double right now. No, no, no. I, I'm, fully, I'm fully here to take the slack for it because no nah, it's all good it's all good i'm only joking g i just had to put it put you on your toes <laughs> live on live no, it, is, <laughs> it is it is me though it is it's thursday now we usually record on mondays and um obviously with my career change going from being a uh, five times a week club dj to a five times a week primary school Kin- teacher kindergarten kindergarten cop <laughs> yeah kind- <laughs> kindergarten dj in teaching a seven-year-old what was i teaching today just this morning, we were doing the, the 10 times table and divisions. Oh, my days. <sighs> I feel like I need to be taught them, mate. My brain. <laughs> Brother, tell you what, yeah? There's some stuff in the curriculum that I actually had to look up for Monday. Monday, we were working on nouns, adjectives, and expanded adjective phrases. I Fair. looked at this and I was like, what the fuck? So, yeah, I had yeah, to look it up. Mad. But, that's yeah, mad. for... Um, that's mad. Yeah, so I know I, I now re know what a noun, an adjective, an expanded adjective phrase is. Anyway, yeah, this lockdown's anyway. bullshit. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. we're anyway. so well, back, back in the, the building, building on a Thursday. Thursday. Back in the building, and yeah. the last few episodes we've been speaking a lot about like the current situation, which really hasn't developed a lot since the last episode. So obviously, like we're all in lockdown across the world like it's not just the uk djs are coming up with new and creative ways everyone's everyone's live streaming some are doing it a lot better than others um Mm -hmm. some are finding their way and really finding their feet and pulling numbers in others are still just ig live with their mum um and then (laughs) but all of that's kind of irrelevant today because today we're gonna pull it back go back in time a little bit and we're gonna talk about certain mistakes or things that throughout our career we would have changed this is an interesting one still because doubles has thrown this on me like five minutes before we went live i've not even yeah there's no prep think. there's no so i don't even know what, i don't even know what's going to come out right now so yeah we didn't prep this at all we just sat down and, and started like what are we going to talk about today and i was like i know let's talk about the mistakes so yeah basically like okay. the first thing for me that comes to mind is when i started djing right so um i think I'm going to say probably about 17, 18 when I started around the club age. Basically, I was so set in my ways. Someone suggested to me to do radio and stuff and someone suggested like being a little bit more versatile. But bro, I was so set in my ways. I was like, nope, I'm only ever doing clubs. I'm only doing R&B and hip hop. And that's going to be me. I'm just going to dominate this. Da, 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 da. So like, I definitely say as things have progressed and, uh, you know, we've done episodes talking about, like, the end game and, and our escape plans and stuff like that. And especially now, as club DJing isn't a thing because we're on lockdown, it's one of those things that over time, obviously, it's evolved for me. But if I could tell a younger me to change my perspective on that, it would be like, nah, don't just focus on clubs. Be versatile with it. Do you know what I mean? Or look to do radio or something, some other kind of platform. Like get out there and do that. Yeah, but you, you, you did, you did do radio from early though, innit? it? No, not from early. I didn't do it from I early. Feel, I feel like you've been doing radio for time. I have. So my first radio show was two thousand and. I want to say two thousand and eleven. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Nine years. Two, maybe two thousand and might have been two thousand and twelve. Okay, I I, I I forget how long we've I forget how long we've been out here, innit? So like even then, like you would you've still been DJing for a hot minute. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Guess. Yeah. So that's that's the thing. So like, but I mean, I remember because my first radio show was this is so this is such a random fact, bro. My first radio show <laughs> was an online station in Bangkok. Yeah, I've heard this one. That's mad. That was my first radio residency. I had a weekly That's show so in a station in Bangkok called UB Radio, Underground Bangkok Radio. And um, <laughs> my first two shows were live in Bangkok at the station. And then obviously I was only in Bangkok for the those two weeks. And then once that trip was over, 
I used to send a pre wrecked show every week. That's that is that is a bro. Do you want to know? That, do you want to know an even more random fact, which I'm not even sure the artist knows this as a fact, right? Styler G, call me a yardie. The first you time, the, the, you, the, the first, first ever, ever play in Thailand. Ever, the first time it was ever played on radio <laughs> or anywhere in public before the video <clears> even <throat> dropped. The first time Stalo G call me a yardi was played on radio. It was from a radio station in Bangkok in Thailand. That's mad. That's well, a that's, cr- that's a crazy well, that's fact. I don't, I don't, that was the first time it was ever played on radio indefinitely. Rob, that was the first time it was ever played outside of Stylo's studio by someone that wasn't Stylo G. That's a madness. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You and Stylo, you and Stylo go back, innit? Holy oh, we got history. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. We go, we go a long way back. Long way. Man back. popped up. In, man popped up in the live the other day, licking out Jamaica flags. He's such a G, bro. <laughs> I think actually, I think I he's just popped in, in Jamaica. Had a quick one, licked up, up a few flags and bounced. bounced. Yeah. I think he's actually in Jamaica right now. I think he's he went to Jamaica yeah, for yeah, the lockdown. I'm not 100 percent certain, but I think he is. But yeah, so uh, that was a proper. I've taken myself right off on a tangent. Oh uh, yeah, so. For the, but for the first portion of my career, literally, I was... Nah, you know what? It couldn't have been 2011. It must have been earlier than that. Oh, well, that's irrelevant. You've always been a bit You've always been a bit stubborn, though, innit? You have your own ways now, obviously. You're more open-minded with what you're doing in regards to radio, you're presenting and all that stuff. But I can see where where you would have been earlier on because you still have them traits in you now. Yeah. Double... <laughs> Double, double, double as his ways, man. I get it, though. But again, maybe that's something that I should adapt and change about myself. Do you know what I mean? Because I, there's definitely times where my stubbornness has worked against me or my setting my ways has worked against me when it could have worked in my favour if I'd been a bit more open for things. But yeah, I think yeah, yeah. that's as a first, if someone said like, what was the first mistake you made as a DJ? That would definitely be the first thing that came to mind was like, starting this with a very narrow-minded view i was aware of other things that you could do but i was just like no i want to be known as a dj and if i'm not if i'm anything else then i'm not a dj do you know what i mean but then using um someone like semtex is a really good example because he's a presenter he's a dj uh, he's been an A&R, do you know what I mean? He's like very, very high up in Sony now doing what he does. Yeah. So like he, he's he been attacking the industry from so many different angles that he's put himself in the position he's in. Do you know what I mean? He's just one example. Yeah. There's a lot of people that do this. But for me, I had early, I had absolutely no interest in doing radio, in working for a label because as far as I saw it, even though it's within the music industry, it wasn't, DJing and I wanted to yeah, just yeah, yeah. DJ but that was that was like the very young me obviously not thinking about the fact that when I touch 50 when I'm 60 etc I'm not still going to be DJing in the clubs yeah I've definitely messed up some opportunities over the years for the same reason to be fair like where I've had residences and with there's been frictions there and most times I'll just allow it most times and just crack on and move forward. And then a year or two later, I'll look back and like, maybe that wasn't the right decision, you know, them ones. But because I, I, I've been semi-stubborn in the way that I do my stuff and the way I approach my club set and my profession. So if it doesn't kind of fall the way I'm expecting it, normally I'll just bounce. Not even in a bad way, but when, when I look back, there's definitely a few times over the years where something could have blossomed into something, something proper, but I never give it the chance because... I was stuck in my own ways, in it. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. And that one, that, yeah, it's probably happened a handful of times, but so, bro, when I first started DJing, I was the complete opposite to you. I wanted to attack everything, in it. Like radio was my initial. That was my initial dream. Like, I remember when One Extra first started. I remember being plugged into like the opening broadcast, yeah. and like this, I was like, this shit is amazing. Like radio was something that I always wanted to do. So straight off from the cuff, I was just trying to. I remember just sending endless amounts of mixtapes to one extra. Yeah, I couldn't even present, bro. Right. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't even on. I wasn't even. On, I think I was doing a like a. I was doing a pirate show on Unity, which is a local station. This was before they went FM or anything, and I couldn't present. I was just in there chatting breeze and flipping recording mixes, and I I just used to send endless tapes, endless mixes to one extra for like 
the first two years, must have been the first two, three years that they were broadcasting, to the point where they actually called me in it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we're like, yo, come, we want to get you in to come down. We want to get you to come down. And I remember going down, and it was Bucky at the time. I don't think she works there anymore. She's probably moved on. I remember going in, and they had a, like a cardboard box full of all the stuff that I'd sent. And there must have been like, I don't even know, 50, 60, 70 demos in there. I couldn't even <laughs> present. I couldn't even <laughs> present. So when, so, when they, so when they got me in to try and sit down and do a pilot, I remember just absolutely flopping it. But my hunger and desire to want to do everything just ended up getting me in a room where I had no fucking idea what, what I was even doing there or how I'm going to even do this thing. <laughs> so, so like my hunger and passion kind of went against me. And I remember leaving that place so wounded because <laughs> i just because i just wasn't ready in it but i was just letting the hunger and the passion to want to be on radio like control me instead of actually thinking about where i'm actually at and i can't even do this yet but i'm gonna go for it anyway so i semi kind of learnt the hard way <clears throat> a man drove all the way to london drove all the way back in the same day and got set and just got a pie in the face but oh. I that. Right, yeah, wait, there, wait there one sec one sec doubles going doubles getting off Right, wow, where's he gone? Double Double has left the podcast. <laughs> um, what happened was I had the feed set up wrong on my side, so it was actually recording your voice as well. Oh my days! So is that? Can we, can we still use that audio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd still be possible. I just have to. <laughs> I've just got to do some chopping now. <laughs> oh, the technicals. The technicals. Bro. Oh my technicals. days! Right, we're back in. We're back in. So you just got. Nothing but airtime from one extra. <clears throat> yeah, man, it was just. But I remember just having that gunko mentality, bro, and that was what kind of it kind of went against me. If 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 I could go back, and I wouldn't have been so obsessively hungry to be successful and just kind of rolled with the punches, man. Because yeah, yeah, I caught I got caught out a couple times because I just wanted to just do this thing, and, and yeah, I'd, I should have just settled and just rolled with it and learnt my craft, and obviously. Ended up doing pure broadcast on one extra eventually anyway, but like, I don't know, six, seven, eight years later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. so it's no, a bit no. bit prim- so it's a bit premature. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whereas you were saying then, like flipping you just wanted to do the whole DJ thing and you rolled I with it. Brother, but I'm I, like- I had yeah, I had absolutely no interest in the early days about doing anything but club DJing. And even to yeah. a point where I was like, I don't even want to do anything outside of R and B and hip hop. I found dancehall quite early in my career. So I started playing dancehall and bashment as well. But house, drum and bass, wasn't interested, bruv. And it wasn't until 2008. In 2008, I realised I need to be more versatile. And that was because I did a residency abroad for the whole summer. And there was another DJ that I did it with. He played house. I played the R and B and hip hop, but okay. then I realised like, nah, to do a whole club night by yourself like this, you need to be able to do all the music. So I learned. I learned to mix house in two thousand eight. Okay. Basically, and that so that was when I kind of was able to then start doing open format sets. Hmm. But going back to those times as well, I I'd definitely say it's so an, another mistake that I would change going back then to around 2008 when i was doing the summer seasons through that time like 2008 2009 2010 i spent a lot of time like online because i was i was helping the club book djs in it book acts and stuff so i spent a lot of time basically online networking with djs and especially from one extra because this is the time where i, I think I might be getting my timeline wrong, but it was around the time where I was starting to get interested in radio as well. So I thought, okay, cool. Let me let me start mixing with the people that are on radio, doing helping them get work, and then in return, I might make friends in higher places, basically. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's when I started getting like a lot of the one extra guys at the time, getting them bookings out in like Greece and all the places that I was doing, being a resident in the clubs. I was getting the clubs to book them, fly them out. And then obviously I was spending like a couple of days with them while they were out there, showing them about, taking them for food, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, but some shocking. of the guys actually became quite, is it bad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not working very well, mate. You keep cutting off. <laughs> oh, bad times. 
Um, oh, they don't want us to win. They don't, they don't want us to win this one. So, some of the times, yeah, with some of the guys that I worked with, I'm still cool with now. Like, I'm still friends with to this day. But other ones, I realized, like, really didn't care. But what I did wrong was... <laughs> just for okay so just just for example yeah i did a lot of work with cameo like dj cameo for example cameo go on and i got him a lot of overseas bookings around that time and then what i was kind of hoping is in return i would be able to have like a sort of a way into one extra does that make sense so like he would yeah, yeah, he yeah. would then be I able to help help me like help me not I'm not talking about get me a show, but help me like begin the path to how I could get through that way. But mm-hmm. as soon as, as soon as it was over, as soon as the book is over, air, eh. <laughs> air oh <laughs> time. Days. But what what I didn't realize, bruv, is like this might not have been his mentality. But some people, for example, when they're in those positions, they're not going to open the doors for other younger hungry DJs because that's potentially a threat to them. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So where I'm going with this is the mistake that I would have made there is by thinking that certain people in the position, the people in the position that I would like to be in aren't going to let me get into that position because that takes it away from them potentially, or that might be their mind state. So the people to actually start networking with, and I didn't learn this until very late is the people that actually make the decisions, the producers, the execs, do you know what I mean? Like I didn't start networking with producers till really late in the radio game for me. Bro, that's actually a sick shout, you know, I didn't even think of it like that because I did the same thing, innit? You feel like before you know any better, you feel like the DJs hold the keys. Yeah. When when in reality, when in reality, it's the complete opposite. Like I always had this thing, yeah, like, when DJs would like tag me in mixes and I'm and and I'm thinking, I'm not your market in it. Like obviously I'll check out your mix or whatever, but like I'm not your market. I'm another DJ. Like you want to be yeah. hitting the people. Like and the same in regards to like getting a radio show. Like the DJs are not the people that can really put you on. You might be able to like plug you in, <coughs> in to an extent if they're not yeah. bad mind or like CJ Beats prime example. We've said it before. Yeah, like, he perfect, would bring so many example. DJs through and would be willing to like put people on and then plug you into the producers. But in reality, like the the production are the people that are going to essentially put you on and help you in it. And that's where I think I made the same mistake in it. I was doing the same thing. I was trying to network and rub shoulders with all these DJs. And to be fair, I'm still friends with a lot of them still to this day in it. But it, it took a while to figure out because I didn't really know the backbone of how a station worked. I didn't know about... Bro, when I first went to One Extra and you told me you had two men on, on deck like p- producing your show and that, I couldn't believe yeah. it. I'm like, I've been out here doing drive time for three, four years on my own, producing yeah. the content doing the idents, doing the interviews, doing the interview prep. I couldn't believe it when I went in there and, I, and like, you've got people passing your notes and assisting with your stuff. I was thinking, blood, is this, is this how it goes? But yeah, I agree, man. I feel, I feel like, I, yeah, man, man definitely made that mistake too. I would, I'd be doing the same shit as you, bro. Trying to yeah. maneuver around these DJs abroad on the holiday islands, hitting Napa and that. And like, I remember connecting with, Ram, connecting with Rampage for the first time out there and, Loads of other little bits and yeah, man, def defo the same way, man, hundred percent. Yeah, that's mad. That's a mad one still. It's it's funny because there's from an outsider's perspective, the DJ or the presenter on the show for radio, for example, they are the face of it. And if they're like, you don't really apart from Charlie Sloth was the first DJ I remember who really put his producer in like the presenter seat. Because obviously, Delisa. Became like basically yeah, a household she became, she became, name. I feel like producers are like part of the show now a little bit, like to an extent, like especially for solo DJs. It just gives that little bit. Oh, he's hung up, brass. Right, he hung up on me. Wasn't feeling that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> carry on, carry on. I was like, so, I was like, he, he, was, he wasn't feeling that conversation. <laughs> yeah, you're nah, the produ- I feel like the producers are part of the show now, isn't it? Especially for solo um, DJs. Because it just gives that extra, just gives you something to bounce off, innit? Like it's, yeah, it's yes and no. Like I, I've, I did a solo show for years with no producer. Yeah, like I and no one really, to like bounce it, off. But it definitely gives 
it just allows you to open up conversation a little bit. Do you know what I mean? It just gives extra elements. You Maybe, do it on your own, it though, also, for sure. It also, it also depends on the producer, though, because I've heard some some presenters in the past to be like, oh, right, well, producer John, what do you think of that? And then producer John in the background be like, eh, it's okay. Cause they're yeah, not, yeah, they have, yeah, 100%, they've they got to have something about it, isn't it? On the yeah, air yeah. personalities. But using Delisa again as a perfect example, she obviously, her and Charlie were friends while he was doing the show. Mm. And like, she just proper played along with his character for the show. Do you know what I mean? Like all the yeah, yeah, all yeah. the bantery stuff. She was just on it as well. Like the energy was good. And yeah, but like, yeah. For, so for example, she was the one that was in charge of the show, I feel. So like whenever, whenever I was doing anything, and you'll know this as well, whenever anything was going on content wise for that, you don't send it to Charlie. You send it to Delisa because she's the producer. Charlie's like yeah, the presenter. Yeah, yeah. So yep, yep, yep. he was the face of the show, but it wasn't he. It wasn't necessarily his show. Do you know what I mean? It was the team around it that were creating the show, and he was just driving it in the right direction. Yeah, does that yeah, make yeah. sense? That's real. that's real. So, but yeah, I mean, I feel like that's definitely, definitely something. If I could go back now and tell the younger me, at a certain stage, be like, I'd be like, look, don't worry about trying to be friends with all the DJs everywhere that was on the network. Yeah. Like, yeah. It obviously, it network. obviously, it obviously helps, innit, it? If you've got friends in the building, oh like, yeah, yeah, it does. Because I found myself when I went down there for the first time, I, I, I knew a lot of people in there, so everyone was like, "Oh, yes, die, what's going on?" Kind of thing, like, and that definitely helped. And I think even the producers kind of thought, "Oh shit!" So like, he's he's got a yeah, couple yeah, yeah. friends in here, kind of thing. So like, I feel like that definitely helps. Hundred percent. In regards, it, it, in regards to getting put on, don't put your focus into that. All I, all I'm saying is like. I've said it already. There's there's DJs and presenters who are in the position, but they are not willing and will never help you get a show because yeah. ultimately it threatens their position. And like, mm-hmm. it's a sad fact. It's a sad fact of life. Like they will have struggled or fought or worked as hard as they can to get to that position. So a lot of people have that mentality of, well, I've had my struggles to get here why should yeah. I just open the door for you? Like you need to go to war as well to get in the same position and earn your stripes. Like I don't yeah. necessarily agree with that mentality. I don't agree with just having it handed to you either. But the lesson I learned there was that they're either not in a position of power to get you somewhere that you need to be, or they don't want to. Yeah, like plain yeah. and simple, oh, yeah. they just don't. They just don't want to help because ultimately you're a threat. And I, I felt, bruv, I felt that kind of way because... I feel like were... that goes on a lot in the game, but not even in radio. I feel like that yeah. happens a lot in the DJ industry in general, innit? But, like, if you're worth your salt and you know what you offer, like, you, you shouldn't see everyone else as a threat. Like, I'm not afraid to put other DJs on or, no, shout, about, or, or shout about someone else doing something dope or sharing yeah. someone's shit because, like, I'm confident in what I'm already... in what I do anyway. Same. So, like, I, f- I feel like that kind of stuff is just insecurities, innit? Yeah, 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 it definitely is. And it's exactly what I'm saying, like, because they don't want you to get into a position where you could potentially move them out of theirs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? And, and that's what it is, because for whatever reason, they're not confident enough in their position. And going back to, like, we've referenced him so, so often on this podcast, like, CJ Beats was the perfect example. He had an absolutely banging show. And then what he did was he opened the door for so many of us to actually so do many. our first national radio broadcasts because yep. he was giving us guest mixes. And through it was through Amy. Do you remember Amy, his producer? Yeah, yeah, Amy's she, a G man. She was then in charge of doing extra talent, which is how mm-hmm. you and I both got on to doing actual live broadcasts. Yo, do you remember when we did the Underground Kings joint? Remember when we did the show together? Yeah, that was that was a sick show, you know. See, this this is the thing, yeah, like one of my mistakes that I was going to get to was definitely not keeping consistent with the radio. Like we are, cause obviously I was on it hard, bro. But like, yeah, when I lost the drive time, I kind of didn't pursue it. Like I should have, I should have stayed on it. Cause I look back now and I think if I, if I kept that consistency and that drive, like who knows where that could have ended up. Cause like already, like I ended up making friends with Charlie through drive time clashing with his show at when he first started. So like, cause our, cause the show had generated that much power. We had people hitting my show up when they'd hit Charlie's up, and we'd always get putting these tweets together 
about people right, yeah, not yeah. knowing what kind of show to listen to. And essentially, that's how like, I ended up making friends with him. And he obviously ended up putting me on in the end anyway. But I just feel like I made a mistake not staying consistent with it after I lost that show because I put so many years and effort into it. I was just like, is this really me? Like, am I going to get on one extra? Like, we'd done, I'd done all the live shows and I'd done this. And then to have your legs cut off, I just, I just never had the heart to go back into it. And then obviously, it's come full circle now. A man's here setting up this compound, yeah. which is my own thing, and where I'm just going to try and put all that experience, all the broadcasting bits, all the stuff I want extra, DJing everything all into this with the visual stuff that I've learned and try and put it all together into that. But yeah, one mistake I definitely made was not keep... I think consistency wins, innit? If you can oh, stay consistent, what, bro. if you can stay consistent I, with what you're doing, and you keep pushing and plowing, like that three years of drive time opened up endless doors for me in it. So yeah, when I look yeah, back, yeah. if I carried that, uh, if I carried that on, that was definitely a big mistake for for me personally. I should never have stopped. Yeah, but I think I see it on the flip side, brother. I think I did radio for one year too long because when. I, I lost I lost the passion for the radio eventually when there were various politics at the station that I was at and I just decided to knock it on the head because it was just getting long and that's when I started going full steam with my YouTube. But yeah, what I wish I'd done is I'd, I wish I'd recognised a year before because it was a year before that I started, I started to feel like I was plateauing within the radio community and okay. that's when I should have been like, right, okay, this... this boat has taken me as far as it will take me now i need to hop off and get onto something else and i I, but instead i've always had this thing where like i'm i get comfortable in it and i'm i'm almost not afraid but i guess yeah you could call it afraid i'm almost afraid to cut something off to try and find a new challenge because i don't want to end up i don't want it to be a waste of time like you know obviously everything I learned at radio and all the contacts I made, it could never have been a waste of time, but I'm not pursuing a career in radio. Now, if it falls in my lap, cool, I'll probably take it, especially now as I'm not working in the clubs right now, but yeah. I'm not constantly knocking on the door at one extra to try and get a show anymore. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, but, 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 do you know what? Yeah. The one extra thing that's, that was like the dream. So when I just like, when I cut that off and I just thought it, this is not, this is, kind of not going to happen in it and I lost my heart for it same way as you it was politics same we had the yeah. same kind of politics at our station but when I stopped doing that show the passion was still there in it I should have carried on right. doing it in other ways whether it was pursuing another network or trying like the wife always used to say oh I'll try capital or try this and I'd just be like oh the stubbornness I'd go back to the stubbornness thing that platform's not really yeah. for me I don't want to do that station like I'm not built for Q103 this whatever like I want to be I'm a bit rough around the edges, presenter-wise. So, like, One Extra was was perfect, isn't it? So, the stubbornness there kind of killed me. The um, thing that One Extra did great was they they take young presenters and they develop they mold them you up, with, their, with their pilot exactly. with their pilot <clears throat> programs. They develop it, but yeah. they allow the presenters to do <clears throat> and be who they mm-hmm. are. Whereas with the other stations, Kiss and Capital, for example, you have to be very, very polished and you have to be their type of presenter. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you listen to it, every I did a demo for Kiss, bro. I did one for Kiss and they I did one for Kiss and they asked for stuff to be a certain way and the links and that and I was just straight away I was like, this is not this is not for me. Like yeah, it's all very, very polished and very clean. Um, uh, funny thing about fuck's sake. Sorry, guys. His face kind of keeps cutting off. Is so poor. He's hung up again. Sorry, guys. Double that's no credit. <laughs> this is not going. <laughs> this is not going well at all, mate. Today, yeah, the apocalypse Jeez. does not want us clot in today. Jesus Christ. Um, funny thing about Kiss <clears throat> is, um, I actually <clears throat> guessed the email address <clears throat> for the head guy at Kiss, like the top guy. What's his name? Andy. Andy. Man like uh, Andy, you know, that's who I spoke to. <laughs> I, I can't remember what, I can't remember his surname, but Andy is his name. And I actually yep. guessed his email address and sent him an email basically requesting like a pilot or some kind of looking. I sent him some stuff and he actually responded. He replied back and uh, he said no. But um, <laughs> anyway, 
I, I've, I've always respected him. I've never <clears> met the guy, but I've always respected him for actually replying, if I'm honest. Yeah, yeah, that's proper. Um, but yeah, anyway, yeah, the radio thing, bro. Man should have stuck it out, bro. That, that's, that's like, I've come full circle now, and I feel like this lockdown really has really took me back to where my passion was, which yeah. was discover, discovering music, you know what I mean? Finding new sounds, promoting and pushing new artists, and, like, I lost my way with that. I got stuck in the rat race of club sets and... There's like I, I said it yesterday when I was in the yard. I was just like, "Do I, do I want to go back to playing top forty urban songs in a club?" <laughs> I don't know because like how I feel right now, no. Yeah. Like, and it's like you saying like you you get that stuck in in a consistent way of doing stuff, whether it's the radio, whether it's playing in clubs. You don't want to let stuff go and move forward, but like now you kind of yeah. forced to reevaluate where you're at and what you're doing. So if there's a time to really pers- like this compound shit has been sat in the back of my mind for ages. And now I'm just like, you know what? This, this, we ain't short of time, mate. So I need to go back to what I'm good at and where the passion lies. Like a yeah. lot of people that have just followed me probably don't even know half the stuff we're talking about that we've done in our earlier careers. Oh, so mate, yeah. it's, it's 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 one of them. But yeah, man, it's I, sh- I should never have I should never have jumped ship on it. But still, <clears throat> life happens, in it, man. Not, that that's probably one of my biggest things looking back, really, throughout my that's career. What, that's Because I feel like that. Did, yeah, I think so. Yeah, because the radio defined me who I, who I was, and that's yeah. what put, that's what put me on and allowed me to build all the other integral parts that I did in my city in regards to the events, jam. Like mm-hmm. we had one of the biggest brands in the city, and that was probably off the back of building that show. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, man. Um, yeah, that's probably it's, my it, one of my biggest ones. It's proper interesting, isn't it? Because like your so your biggest thing that you would change or the biggest like let's just say mistake that you feel like you've made is by stopping doing something. And yeah. mine in terms of radio is by not stopping it. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I feel That's obviously mad. with with me outside of the clubbing stuff, like my online profile, everything directs to YouTube. Do you know what I mean? Everything that I do is about DJ Double TV, whether it's the interviews, obviously through lockdown, I'm doing this FaceTime thing with people. Um, do you know what I mean? Like I've got the content, like I'm doing album reviews on the channel and stuff like that. All the content I'm doing, everything throws back to my channel. But I feel like it would be twice as far if I just stopped radio one year earlier. You think so? Yeah, I think so. I, I'm, I'm... I, it's, I'm trying my hardest right now. I'm just around the corner from 10,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel. Go on, son. If if I'd had a year, like this time next year, I reckon it'd be 20,000. So if I had a year off of radio when I had got to that point where it was just starting to plateau, but I sailed it out for a year, I'd be a year ahead of myself now. So I think okay. I'd, I'd, I'd be knocking on 20,000 by now, I think. But, um, well, I guess one of the lessons there then is learning to just sometimes you just got to let stuff go and move and move forward in it and don't overthink yeah, well, that's, and don't that's overthink what I'm the saying. situation. I should have well it goes back to what I was saying before about when certain when I get to a position I get comfortable and then sometimes I'm almost afraid to let I'm afraid to take the risk. I hear it. When bro, the risk pays you. off, but if it doesn't pay off it feels like it could be devastating. But yeah. in reality it's actually not. Do you know what I mean? Like yep. it can't take away anything I've done. But what I was afraid of doing is stopping radio mm-hmm. and then disappearing. Because I know some people that were on community radio or whatnot, even the same station that I was on. And when they stopped, they literally became no one in the industry because they hadn't worked on their network. They had no backup content. They were now just doing nothing. They weren't a radio presenter, not okay. DJing in the clubs. They were just... And then they just went to being a civilian. Boom. Regular job, like nine to five. They're the, said, they're the ones... guys, guys said went to being a civilian. Yeah. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean? They just went to being a civilian. Um, I hear it. I hear it. However, mm. the, looking back at it, like with hindsight, that could never have happened to me if I'd stopped when I should have stopped because I had YouTube, because I was DJing in the clubs. Do you know what I mean? Like I had the other content. But I was just, I was afraid to stop doing radio because I'd been there for so long. I was afraid this was a station in London, by the way, not the one in Bangkok. Um, <laughs> I'd been there, I'd been there for so long and I was almost afraid to let that go and then become irrelevant. Does that make sense? And like just become mm-hmm. stagnant. But 
I should know, uh, man. Like the the mentality I have about this whole industry and about my work, I don't stop. I don't stop working. Do you know what I mean? Like I I'm it. constantly creating something. I this is the thing. Uh, like I see, like yo, I'm not not even trying to send shade at DJs or anything, yeah. But I see so many people during this lockdown, and like I know, obviously, you got to take a little bit of time out to look after yourself or whatever. But I see people just not doing nothing, and like I don't know whether it's just me personally, but I just don't have it in me to just not do anything like yeah. i feel like my brain doesn't allow that behavior like i just want to be creating <coughs> and doing stuff all the time like that's I, like you just said then i'll never fall into that pot where i'm not doing something because I've, yeah I, it's just instilled in my brain to create and just not even for the fact that i've not become irrelevant but this is just what i like doing bro yeah yeah, like, yeah. I, I think... and as the years have evolved i've just moved into other avenues of work just like as a natural thing, not because I want, like, oh, I want to go and be a videographer now. I just had to learn new skills as I was moving through the game, and it's ended up just being a, a thing. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I think there's there's a certain mentality you've got to have to do this every day. But, like, there's there's very successful DJs that just do clubs. Do you know yeah, what I mean? They, they, yeah, don't, they literally don't create any online content outside of what they post on Instagram. Mm -hmm. But that's fine. If yeah, of course it is, man. If that's your business model, if that's how you want to run it, that's fine. Similarly, like, it's also okay to be not creating anything in this time right now. If you're on lockdown 100%. and you've just decided, you know what, I'm actually going to treat this as a holiday yeah. and I'm not working so I can just clear my mind. Let my... Bruh, one of the biggest things I've realized is the rest on people's ears. Like, because I've been doing mixes and stuff and been that's, working that, still. That's in real things. still. My ears are getting like, pounded, bro. <laughs> mine still are, bro. You know what? And I actually thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to have a day where I literally hammer out a stack of mixes and get almost like a month's worth of content ready in a day or two days and then just switch off and just post. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Schedule yeah. it because I need to give my ears a rest because I was battering them yesterday doing a mix. So... I but, feel like it just it just helps me creating, bro. Like this lockdown thing, doing working on this project, it's allowed me to not even think about what's really going on out there. That's the thing. What, that, like, what I'm enjoying doing it, but it's also not. It's making it a little bit easier. Like, yeah. Well, I suppose the, the other thing is you're not a gamer, are you? You don't play video no, games. No, no, I'm not. A gamer, I know, like bro. one of the things you do in your downtime is watch football, but obviously yep. there's no football, so. Yep. Other than, unless you're going to go online and start watching old matches, mm -hmm. like, what, what, how, do, I mean, how do you spend the time? It, you just create all the time, innit? Or you just well, kick honestly, back and yeah, chill like, I'm either, I'm either kicking with wifey and, or, or working. Like, they're, they're, they're the two yeah. things. Like, I don't really have, like, another, I, I, it's, I don't, it's weird. Like, yeah, literally it was football and music, mate, and there's it's, no football. And, and yeah, and the other, but the other thing is traveling. I know you love to travel. Oh yeah, about. yeah, tra so yeah, like travel. Yeah, obviously the traveling is is a, is a big thing. Like I don't, for me, yeah, I don't move around a lot of people. I, I know yeah. a lot of people. I got a lot of friends, and I connect with a lot. But in general, I move around on my own a lot. I'm a bit of a solo backpacker. Yeah, bit weird, bit weird, mate. So like that bit is not bothering me as much. Mm -hmm. Not being able to move around freely is where my problem lies. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. if I want to go and jump on a plane and go next, I, I want to do it. Like, if I want to go and jump on a train to London and go on Linkman, I want to do that. Like, that is what is hurting me the most. Yeah. It's the freedom of movement. Mm. Like, if you said to me, yo, you got to be in your studio for a week on your own, I'm cool with that. As yeah, long as yeah, I, yeah. I've got my socials and I can connect and talk to people still, fine. As long as there's enough coffee move. for the week, we're good. Get, bro, you get me. As long as the Tassimo's are loaded, mate. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's the, it's the freedom thing because outside of football and travelling and the music and then obviously time with the missus, I'm not... I don't really have much more interests, which yeah. is mad. I just geek out on stuff. I watch hella YouTube tutorials, camera gear, whatever it is. Like just trying to take it as much knowledge as possible in it. Yeah, learn you know learning learning using this time to learn is a really good thing. I, obviously, as I said at the start, I've learned what a noun is. I know what an adjective is. <laughs> <laughs> I know about expanded adjective phrases. That's what I've been learning. But um. I'm trying to think no, about other is... mistakes. I'm trying to think about other mistakes, bro. Going back to the original point, like that, like I would have changed. I definitely would. I definitely wouldn't have got involved in nightclubs, like in a business aspect. Like that's right. probably another one for me. From um, the investment, 
investment yeah in, invest investment wise like i would definitely would have wouldn't have done that like i was naive yeah, I know, didn't know what i didn't know what i was getting into kind of naive with it and yeah looking back that was a big one so for people trying if, if anyone's looking at investing in clubs or whatever do your research man make sure to you be, get that to, tight. to be fair I'm not sure there's anyone, any amateurs out there right now that are going to be investing in nightclubs. <laughs> well, yeah, ain't no one, ain't no one investing in no clubs. <laughs> oh, fuck. Do you know what oh. I mean? It could have gone one or two ways, but it could have gone one way where I would, would have ended up a very wealthy man and it would have all been lally dally, or it could have gone the other way, and which it did. So it's yeah. one of them, isn't it? But yeah, looking back, like I feel like the radio stuff and then one or two investments. I feel like I've, everything else has sem been half decent. Maybe look, maybe one or two residences here or there that I've walked away from due to my own stubbornness that could have ended up being something that didn't. But in general, um, I don't know, man. I just feel like the, the time that we come through, you got to be built a different stuff, man. You come yeah. through different back then. Like now, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's the entry level's a lot lower. Do you know what I mean? And we we are, we have to learn a lot coming through like i remember just going to i remember going into clubs bro with tapes with fucking tapes g like t i remember going into clubs with tape cassettes bro tdk 90s bro like people are gonna be able to figure out my age now i remember going in and just handing it oh to give out sorry i thought you were talking about to dj from no giving out tapes is in like demos bro right like, because I was trying to get in clubs before I was even old enough. Yeah, I don't think I ever gave. I, up I remember to... getting a. Le- I remember getting a peg up through um the local. There was a local club in my in my ends called the Met Bar. My first residency. I remember getting a peg up through the bathroom window oh, yeah, by the resident some... when I when I was like sixteen or seventeen, <laughs> and I went in there and shelled. It, it was a uh, one of them C C Citronic wall rack mounts with the little jog wheels where you could like <laughs> did, 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 did. you know you had to find a cue point and it's like did, 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 yeah, did, yeah, and you'd yeah, scroll through one of them bro and if you didn't get the if you didn't get the timing right on the cue point or whatever i remember going in there and they pegged me up through the bathroom window this wall this window was high it was yeah. like 12 foot high bro i was thinking if i dropped from here man feed dead anyway <laughs> got 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 through the window i remember just being in the toilets all these drunks in there i was like oh my god i'm like 16 17 years of age anyway I ended up shelling it and i went back a couple of times to do like this set underage bro mad proper mad as soon as I hit 18 i had a friday saturday sunday residency in this bar yes like getting like and it, they were paying me like 120 150 quid a night bro i was like 18 450 yeah. a week and that are you mad I couldn't so there, believe there it. You go. There you go, kids. Any underage DJs listening or young DJs wanting to know how to get into the business, what you do is find get the a local up through pub the bathroom. <laughs> and climb through the toilet window and then sneak in and somehow persuade the DJ that's on to give you a set quality. Bro, it's, it's mad, yeah, because as soon as, it ate, as soon as I was old enough, um, one of the girls that used to live in the ends, called, I'll, ne- I'll never forget her, she was called Lorraine. She ended up getting the manager's job there. Shouts to Lorraine. She, and and she knew about me DJing like locally, and she she just knew of me in it. So as soon as she come in, I got the f- she called me, Sweet. and like at that age, at that age, I couldn't believe it. I was like, what? Okay, yeah. so you know I mean, so big up the rain, man, because like I was, without that gig, I would never have got put on. Yeah, yeah, I think Mad, like one of one of the things I've always been in conflict with myself about this, right? Because one of the other things that I would say. I don't know if I could put this down to actually being a mistake, but something that I definitely think has halted a little bit of progress or not given me certain opportunities is the fact that I refuse to play for free. So I hear that. Same. Or or even like I, I have a price and I stick to it because I believe that's my worth. That is what I'm worth. If you want to book me for an event, it's this much. Mm-hmm. And these are the requirements. And, bruv, in all honesty, like, the rider that I come with and the requirements to book me are really not big at all in no, terms bro, of... This is the thing, bro. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, <laughs> if, I, I'm talking... And we've spoken about this in the past. But I'm talking about, like, an overseas booking, for example. You've got to pay yeah. the fee and you've got to pay for flights and accommodation <clears> and buy me a meal, basically. That's that's it. That's all I'm asking for. Everything else is a bonus, but that's all I ask for. But 
there's been I don't even I don't even ask for the I don't even ask for the meal. <laughs> I don't even ask I, for I the mean, meal. I, 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 don't, I never <laughs> you know what I never actually ask for it, but I kind of <clears throat> in a certain way I I don't know if it's rude or not, but I kind of expect it. But only because the first few international bookings I ever did, that was just what happened. And going back to the days when I was in um, <clears throat> doing stuff abroad and entertaining like the guys that I was bringing out for the club, the club yeah. always paid for me to take the DJs out for food. So I kind okay. of, that was where that mindset came. Like, okay, well, someone flies you out, they put you up in a hotel, they give you food and they pay your fee. That was that was where yeah. I learned that. So it was just kind of like a given. Um, but yeah, so going back to like, uh, I've always- I feel like I was the on... same with money, bro. I feel like I was the same as you with the finances, but it was depending on what it would offer me if I took the money out of the equation. Like yeah, if it yeah, was, yeah. or if it was, if it felt beneficial- and it was something that was going to help me in any sort of way or plug me into some kind of new reach or whatever, then I'd be willing to to, to, to work with it. But yeah, primarily, yeah, see, you got you got, primarily, you got to go out for what you work. Obviously, looking at it now, we've been in the game a while. I'm not even on that page right now. The amount of brands that are hitting me up trying to get me to stream for free and I'm just like, I may as well DJ on my, I may as well do my own stream and throw, yeah. a, and throw a bloody cash app link in there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or a PayPal you know I mean? link, and you're which gonna I'm not going to do because, like, I'm not even trying to do that either. But I hear, I hear it, I hear, I hear it. 100%. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not necessarily talking about live streams right now. I'm talking about other opportunities in the past. So, like, <clears throat> there's been various festivals that have hit me up. I've been like, all right, do you want to come and do? Not, not necessarily the main stage, but they've been like, do you want to come and do a set at such and such on this stage or whatever? I come and do an hour set. And um, we'll put you on the lineup. And it's like, what they're offering is exposure. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Expo but exposure for me, credits. I'm like, you know what? If there's no money on the table, or just for example, like there's, I've been offered festivals where they're like, yeah, but we'll pay for your petrol. Like we'll pay your, your travel cost. And it's like, I feel like it's a bit cheeky in in, in respect no, no, to no, like, yeah, especially so no, especially when you've done events, bro, and you know how the finances break down and how it works. Like cutting off a little DJ fee for a DJ is yeah. microscopic amounts. That's the thing, but the problem is, so just for example, they might they'll have headliners on there that are getting paid thousands of pounds. Like they might, if it's a big festival, yeah. some of the big festivals, bro, they're like a hundred thousand upwards for the headliners. And now I'm thinking, mm -hmm. and you're offering me like. 30 pound which is the is what it's going to cost me to get there and so like yeah. but the prob the problem here is there are DJs that will take that opportunity <clears throat> there are DJs that just want to play to a crowd or they just want to say oh I played at such and such a festival and the money 100. is the money isn't a isn't a thing for them like they would rather just do it for free and they're not getting paid but this is where I'm conflicted because I'm like Ultimately, I still, to this day, feel like... Turn it down. My, my, my wife has ordered a flipping skateboard, bro. She's going to die. <laughs> She's going to die. <laughs> the skateboard's yeah, that's arrived. True. Bro, but, the um, skateboard has arrived. She's going to be out here like Tony Hawk's. <laughs> ultimately, yeah, going back to this point, ultimately, like... There's certain DJs that can now say like, oh yeah, I've, I've played at this festival. I've played at that festival. Da, 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 da. But yeah, yeah. Are you like, this is where I'm contra. This is where I, 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 I'm so conflicted with myself because it's like, yeah, cool. You get to play to X amount of people. And some of those people may then become fans of you. So yeah. in terms of your branding, you're growing it. Right? I but, feel like but, it comes down to what you can bring to the table with it too, bro. Like, if you're going to exactly. do one of them little sets and get peanuts, if you can bring all your other shit together around it and make that shit look so lit on your socials and bring other assets and like, you're going to get a lot out of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but again, though, I still I don't necessarily think it's a great thing to do for the socials because what people do with it is they'll do a festival set for free and then they'll post it on their socials like they were the headliner. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, they, don't, yeah, yeah, they yeah, don't. Yeah, there's a way to they, go about it. You don't. They you don't can't, put it. They don't put it, like it out there that they were doing it for free. 
they put it out there like they got paid thousands to be there when it's actually like nah you even had to pay your cameraman to come with you so it cost you yeah, money yeah, to yeah, do yeah, that yeah. set this is what i don't understand yeah, but yeah, yeah. again going back to the conflict here is it's like i feel like my mentality around that may have blocked me from certain opportunities and i know okay. one for, one for example a very well established artist who's out doing world or before this was doing world tours like he's touring in every different country i had the opportunity to be his tour dj at the start but they couldn't pay and i was already making money from the clubs so i turned it down because they were like right now there's no budget we're almost doing the club shows for free okay. but then now he's making thousands and i know his Mad. dj his dj is getting paid a stack and making a lot Mad. of money Mad. and it's like if i had <clears throat> if i'd looked at it with the long-term mentality that's the position i would have been in right now yeah but yeah, yeah. and I, bro this is a this is an artist that i championed from day one so it wasn't even that i didn't believe in the artist it was a case of i've got i've got a career right now and I don't want to go back to doing events for free. Do you know what I mean? Like, plus, not it. to mention, I, my, my son was alive. So I had a family to look after and had rent to pay at the time. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, there were other this is the thing. Sometimes it's not always about money. That's what I'm saying. But like, if you've got bills no, exactly. and, you've got, no, and you've got children and you've got a situation yeah. to deal with, like, I know some dudes that have come in the game that have come from a background of money or... I mean, financially already cool. So going out and doing that kind of stuff to put themselves on, it's not really affecting their situation. But some yeah. people, like like for people like us, it's our livelihood and it keeps a roof <coughs> over our head. And it allows yeah. us to, I mean, we've got to look after our children or whatever. Like, I, think I hear the pro- it, man. The problem is because like going back as well to the, like doing the overseas booking. So an example is like, there's been times where I've been offered an overseas booking and they're like, right, okay, it's, it's a, a fee less than what I'd get paid in the UK and they're covering flights and accommodation. But, or it might even be like, we'll cover your flights and accommodation and that's all we've got the budget for. There's no fee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certain people would take that just to say, just so that they can say they're an international DJ. But like, mm-hmm. for me... If you've seen what I can do in a club and you really believe in the brand, this is the fee. If you're willing to yep. put the money in, cool. We can we're gonna have a sick event. If you're not, that's also cool. Like it's no, we're not falling out over it. But I'm not. I, do you know, do you know where what the I mean? problem like, is for that as well, bro? Do you know where the problem is for that? The minute you go out for free and you take that gig for flights and accommodation, you instantly fall into that bracket. Like yep. if you don't believe in your own fee. And you're willing to demand it, nobody's gonna pay it. Like once you go out and do that free gig or whatever, like, you, and then work it. So, oh yeah, well, my guy done this f- for flights and accommodation or whatever. Yeah, like, exactly. The, the, the energies are then out there for you to not be able to ever. You're not gonna be able to scale up your monies or what you're trying to get. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. I hear you, bro. It's definitely a conflict to me. In my early career, bro, I def- I did a couple of gigs where, where it wasn't where I didn't make it about the money, but I soon learned yeah, yeah, my yeah. value, and I was like, it's not the one. Do you know what I mean? My, and my, I probably my, same my as, very... same as you. I've lost opportunities, bro. Same way. Like my for, very for, first for that, international but... gig. My very first international gig. I did for free, but the reason was I was already on holiday, okay. and. I I happened to create an opportunity for myself at a bar but that then led to I think I've told this story before that situation me doing that set for free led to an opportunity where the biggest club the club owner of the biggest club on the island heard me play and said tomorrow night can you come to the club and play but that's when I was like sick well yeah but you're gonna have to pay for it yeah and even then the price wasn't that big but by doing that, I shelled it in the club. They then said, we want you to be our resident next year. And the following okay. year, so when I went back to be their resident, bruv, I put a big price tag on it and I made a lot of fucking money that year. My guy, <laughs> do you know, my do you know guy, what I mean? my and guy. So by doing that first set for free, I created an opportunity for myself. But that's where I, f- I feel like in some of these instances, if... <laughs> If you ask for the set or if you ask for the opportunity, 
I think that's where you have got to be like, well, okay, yeah, I've got to kind of bow down to. Yeah, do yeah. It for if free. you're ask, yeah, but if you're asking for it, you don't get the leeway. If, if somebody asks you to do the set, yeah. that's where you've got to put the price to- tag on it and not mm-hmm. do it for free. You have well, to value your shit. And when when festivals and promoters and whatnot come around and they're like, ah, oh, yeah, but we don't have the budget for such and such. It's like, cool. In that case, there's a DJ that bought a controller when he was on lockdown and he's now been DJing in his yeah. bedroom for two weeks. He, Book him instead yeah. and see how good exactly. your event is. Because I bring yeah. something to the table and mm-hmm. I help add value to your... That's what, that's what I genuinely believe, which is why I don't work no, for I, free. I, you know I, I, mean? I agree. I agree. <clears throat> if you but, don't believe in your own source, bro, then you can't expect anyone else to. No, like exactly. you've got to be con- you've got to be confident in what you bring to the table, and like you say, sometimes you got to slap that price tag on there, man. I fully, yeah. I agree. I fully but, agree with everything you just said, our kid. But going back to the original topic, there is there is definitely situations that I feel like I might have lost out on certain opportunities because of the unwillingness to work for free. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So. Mm. Yeah. Other than talking that, about talking things... about that quick one, quick one on. before before we start wrapping up that the financial yeah. thing, probably another one of my mistakes is um not being wise with my money in it when I've had like good times. Yeah, yeah. Even yeah. Even, even though like a lot of money probably went on traveling and doing whatever else cuz yo know, cuz when I was younger but even getting on a plane was a thing like it was never going to happen. So like when yeah. I could actually when I was actually getting paid I, I just what I wanted to like live a little do you know what i mean but i let that go on a little bit too long so when i look back like for example when jam was running and everything was great like i should definitely have stacked more peas bro like because for times like now g yeah, when yeah, yeah. there is no work like you just don't like no one even seeing this coming obviously financially we're cool like we're okay but you don't know how long this is going to go on for so like when i look back to them times when everything was great like, I'm DJing four or five nights a week. I've got my own club night every Saturday. Like, everything is sick. Like, it couldn't be any better. I should definitely have been filling up a bunker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, you I know, you know the them same, ones. So I feel like financially, like, people, like, that was a mistake for me. Like, yeah. being clever clever with your money. Like, save for them rainy days, man. Because this shit is like footballers. The, it only comes in once. And it don't yeah. go on forever. Like, yeah, you could end up being Disco Dave. DJ until you're 50, 60 years of age, but that ain't where I want to be, mate. So it's one of them. Like, yeah. I, w- I'd, I would have been way more sensible with my finances, man. But when I look back, like half the stuff I've done, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Like the traveling, seeing the world, like I want to, I've always had this thing where I wanted to see the world, bro, before I die. Everything, like traveling's a thing for me. So yeah, yeah man. You better go on Google Maps now, then. <laughs> Get me now, now. Now I'm just on Google Maps 3D version, walking around streets, <laughs> take, taking in the views. <laughs> oh, it's depressing, isn't it? Oh, well, yeah, man. That's pretty. That's pretty much it for me, G. Like, there's probably more, um, but off the top of my head, yeah, man. Yeah, I think. And, like, here, and here, and here we are. They're the major ones. The other thing I would say, obviously, we need to wrap up now because I've got to go and make Roman lunch. Oh, <laughs> but, um, heck, here we go. Oh no, it's bad. Back into daddy mode. Um, I think one one very very important thing to do, which I kind of didn't realise straight away, but was smart enough to adapt quickly when I did realise. So I, I feel like I got to grips on it. Is about being a DJ is about being a brand. So like, yeah, get. Get a logo that you're happy with. Get a logo that represents... It doesn't even have to represent what you do. It doesn't have to have headphones in it or... Do you know what I mean? Like, there was a great example like Apple, for example. Their logo is an Apple with a bite mark out of it. Has fucking absolutely nothing to do with electronics. Windows. Windows is a window. Nothing to do with electronics. Do you know what I mean? Like, all of these... There's, there's, I saw this example the other day. There's loads and loads of logos, company logos. Shell, Shell is another one, oil company. The logo is yeah. a shell. It has nothing to do with oil and petrol. <laughs> but like... That's, that's legit. They have, bro, there's, bro, there's so many. I saw a list and there's so many of them, so many. So like branding and coming up with a good, strong logo that will become recognizable um, is, is something that, 
I think is is definitely a learning point for a lot of new DJs and learning the business that you are in, learning how it works, how clubs work, how record labels work, how streaming works, how music distribution works. Do you know what I mean? Like every aspect of the business is something that I wish I had learned early because I've been playing catch up, brother. I've been playing catch up ever since I got into presenting. Do you know what I mean? But had I realized early, like, okay, well, being a DJ isn't just being a DJ. It's actually being part of the music business. And yeah, that's real. when Travis Scott drops a new album, the first people to get it are the DJs that have a friend in the label. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to wait until release day because actually some people are getting it two weeks ahead of time. Do you know what I mean? Which is how you're hearing DJs play. Like exclusives don't really exist anymore. But you know what I mean? Like when you hear DJs play yeah, songs yeah. and you're like, how the fuck have they got that song? Like I, I've got, yeah, you know, I legit. have, I've, I've got songs because of the stuff that I do with certain labels. I've got songs now in my track wise that I'm working on radio projects for that no one on radio even has yet because it, do you right. know what I mean? It hasn't been pushed to radio because I haven't done the radio edges. I'm working on them right now. So, yeah. And it's all, it's, it's about like, the music exists. Some of the music that's out exists way in advance of its release. So if you make... I, no, right- I remember finding about mail outs, bro. I remember the first time I got on a mail out. I couldn't believe yeah. it. I was like, bro, this is legit. Yeah. The music exactly. comes to your house for that's free. But e- even uh- now, bro, I had someone, <laughs> someone shout at me the other day and they were like, I spend a lot of money on, on releases and buying MP3s and... Yeah. I'm a even, of, and they don't even they don't even know about mail outs. Yeah, no, no. And they, they said, and I'm a member of DJ City, but I don't know where else to get music. And I spend so much yeah, money on mad. music. Where else can I find good music? But that I don't have to pay for because I'm already spending a lot. So I, was, I just gave them a list of all the pluggers. I was like, search for these guys, find their email address, ask to be on the mailing list. Because yeah, you def- yeah, you definitely you know what you're right about learning your industry, bro. Because I reckon there's a lot of DJs out there that probably don't even know about them kind of things. No, even not still at all. now because because a lot of people can get in it so quick now. They're not yeah. even trying to look like. I remember doing the early street parties for like Sony and, and Atlantic with Matchstick and Reggie Styles back in the day, and like yeah. they taught me all about the mail outs and servicing records and music. Like obviously now it's a little bit different, but. Yeah, I agree. I agree, man. Definitely to be learning your industry. Again, yeah. like going back to when we come through, like I think we were a little bit lucky doing that street team stuff because it allowed us to plug in from early. Like yeah, I knew street, about the street mail outs. Don't exist how, anymore, did it? How, yeah, they don't even exist. Like, and we learned about that stuff very, very early. I remember being 19, 20, hosting um, album launch parties in the local clubs. Yeah, same, same, same. Like, I, mem- I remember doing the, the, the album, I remember doing the launch for. Like Cassie, me and you and stuff like that. Like big yeah. album project launches. They'd send all the posters and the CDs to your gaff and you'd Copies give them away give on away the night and, and s- yeah, yeah, yeah. send pictures back to the to the label of the night and stuff. all that kind of stuff. Like it's completely, obviously it's completely different now, man. I thought that shit was dope though. That was a good way to tag into marketing and help your events, man. And Yeah, it was, yeah, that was a get, great way to do it. And get, and get free material and like official album launch parties and all yes, that. Yes, like you know that what? Was, it they, was need good, to, man. they need to bring that. Some artists need to bring that back, like single 100%. launch parties in the clubs. 100%. Give away merch. Like imagine Travis Scott performing. sends out his album and his and his marketing stuff to like 50, 20 clubs in England and, yeah. and then his big album project release parties and just Travis visuals on the screen, official directly from the team. Bro, with social media and that now, you're crazy. So yeah, no brainer. That, that guy, but that guy's a different breed, man. He did a concert on on uh, Fortnite the other day. Oh, f- bro, it was lit. My, I don't even bro, like that shit. My son told me about it. He was like, "Yeah, Travis Scott was he he was um singing on Fortnite." Obviously, I saw yep. it on the socials. But Roman is seven years old, and he it is looked now sick, bro. <laughs> it was sick. It, well, I, I play a bit of Travis Scott, but not a lot in the house. Obviously, like Roman loves all the stuff I listen to anyway, but I don't play yeah. a lot of Travis Scott in the house, but Roman is now a Travis Scott fan because Travis Mad. Scott did a concert on, on Fortnite and Roman saw it. So now these he's listening know, to These songs. guys know what they're doing, innit? They know what they're doing. Very brother. smart. The, con- the concert, was, yo, it was sick, but you could run around and like, you just run around in the game and he's just there like 100 foot tall. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. Anyway. Anyway. I think anyway. have got to wrap it up because I've got a seven-year-old yeah, boy that needs lunch. And I'm not going to lie, my stomach's grumbling as well. So I've got to go and eat some lunch. Do your thing because um, I've got to go straight to the studio now. So I'm, I'm off. 
Yeah, we announced it last week, but we are definitely working on the details behind this. And now that I have a phone and it's fixed and it's working, we will be doing a Q&A, a live Q&A on the TalkOver yep. um, Instagram. So at Talkover Pod is the Instagram handle. So yeah, yes. if you're listening and you don't follow us already, please do, because we're going to be doing a live Q&A on Instagram Live. So any questions you guys put to us, we're going to be answering for you live on Instagram Live. Yeah, man. Keep a lookout on the on our Instas, innit? I'll get, I'll get some artwork up with the details of where you, what yeah. time and when you can listen and all that crap. So yeah, That's keep right. a lookout. Keep a lookout. So at Talk Over Pod on Instagram and Twitter as well. Uh, if you're talking about it, if you're sending clips, sharing clips, hashtag Talk Over Pod Clart. Um, yeah, it's uh, Stylist did just did the biggest yawn. <laughs> yeah, bro, I'm struggling today, bro. That's just took all my energy out of me. Now I'm done. Ugh. I'm done, done for the Amazing. day, mate. Double Check and me. Stylo talk over Podclart, and uh, yeah, tell a friend to tell a friend, you bitch. Peace out, Bloodclart. <laughs>